Hey Bucket Pond family, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at the Pickle Jar Polydarium, which has been sealed up for three years. As always, I am your host, Terry, and this is Bucket Ponds. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. We do tons of nano aquariums, aquatic ecosystems, ponds, and other projects. So this is a polydarium jar. Uh, it's an old pickle jar with a smaller jar inside in the middle which acts as our land portion. And uh, there is some clips at the end of the video showing how it was set up. There is a setup video on YouTube, but it's very old and very low quality. But this pickle jar has developed really nicely. It looks a bit rough, but nature isn't clean, you know, so it's gonna be a little rough. Uh, but the biggest part, the most exciting part of this update, uh, for me anyway, is uh, the bladder snails, yes. We have bladder snails that have survived in this sealed jar for three years. That's really cool to me. Um, they are very small. They have not reached the large adult size that we see in our fish tanks. And uh, these bladder snails represent an important artifact for the Bucket Ponds channel. Uh, this tank was built before we started the bladder snail breeding program, which means that uh, these snails are among the first that we ever found. They are the first family line that we interacted with. So they're kind of like an artifact or a time capsule. And uh, that's pretty cool to me. I'm very happy to see them in here. Uh, in our previous three-year update for the pond ecosphere, uh, the bladder snails had gone extinct. But in this tank, they have survived. And that shows me a few different things about how we can do better with our ecosphere projects in the future. Uh, most importantly, this is a polydarium, meaning that there is a land portion. There is also a larger air portion. Um, there's less water in this jar. And uh, I think that might mean a lot for uh, the amount of life that it can support in the aquatic portion. We also have uh, a few hundred ostracods in here and some long aquatic earthworms as well. So that's pretty cool. I wanted to start strong with the bladder snails up close. Uh, but here's a look at the polydarium. There is quite a bit of plant growth up above the surface of the water, and there is some potting soil in here. It's a Wallstad-style aquarium in the bottom, and it has an island uh, built with a jar inside with some dirt inside of it, and that has supported the growth of these grass plants and these different things up above the surface. Uh, mainly this was planted with moss, hypnum moss, I believe, and some grass plants and some other things from my very own yard. This is locally sourced, of course. But here's a look at the moss up close, and you can see some fungus or some algae growing there as well. And that's natural. You know, I, I don't open these, I don't maintain them, I don't go in there and trim the plants or anything like that. So we let nature take its course. And this shows us that the moss is very, very well adapted to life inside of a sealed polydarium like this. And up here we have some grass plants as well. Uh, a few tufts have uh, survived and are growing, so that's a good sign. And I believe that this air portion up here has done a lot to create more oxygen and uh, empower the aquatic portion to support more life. Uh, in our other ecospheres that are mostly uh, underwater, you know, it's 90% water in the jar, uh, we haven't seen as many animals surviving in the aquatic portion. So this open air type, part land, part water polydarium seems to be a better option uh, for growing, you know, and maintaining populations of aquatic pets inside of a sealed jar. And uh, we built it with quite a few, uh, ma excuse me, marble chunks in here, the marble rocks there. And we have some uh, moss or algae growing above the surface. But if you look closely, you can see all of our ostracods in here. They are thriving. And uh, that's pretty cool. Ostracods seem to be the most durable creatures for ecosphere experiments. Um, they are very hardy, and they don't seem to require many resources to develop a sizable population. We also have a few aquatic earthworms in here, which are those red strings there. Those are actually worms. I'm not sure of the species. I just happen to call them aquatic earthworms because of how they act. They will burrow into the, the mulm layer, into the substrate, and they'll occasionally venture up here and, you know, feed on detritus and whatnot. Uh, but these, uh, <laughs> these pets in here are doing so well, and I was very, very excited about this. 
mainly the bladder snails, but also the ostracods. There's just so many of them. And this shows me that we have set up a beautiful ecosphere. We've stumbled into a nice method for building aquatic sealed ecosystems. We've tried a number of different types of ecospheres. We've built maybe a dozen or more here on the channel. And uh, these are some of my oldest. Uh, this one in particular was built on September 11th of 2019. And here above the surface, we have some of the moss. Um, I regret not including some kind of land-dwelling creature. Uh, probably springtails would have been a good option, or maybe even isopods if they could be supported in this type of project. But the moss is very healthy, and it's doing really well. There is some wilting and some brown stuff in here. But overall, this project is amazing, and I'm so happy about it. Uh, I'm blown away by the, uh, the results of this three-year sealed project. Uh, returning back to the aquatic portion, we have uh, one of our bladder snails in here. And I'm, I'm just so happy to see them in here doing so well. I didn't find any bladder snail eggs, and they are quite small compared to uh, my fish tanks. But I believe that the bladder snails are adapting to the sealed ecosystem. You know, uh, food is going to be quite limited in here, so they are forced to uh, remain at a certain size. It's probably stunted their growth a bit, and uh, that's okay. As long as they're in here and they lay an egg here and there, then their numbers will continue to thrive. You can even see his little face there. That's pretty cool. And right now, this bladder snail is scraping the benthic layer, the uh, algae and bacteria layer off of these rocks. They're consuming it and turning it into food. The ostracods themselves, I believe they are doing the same. And overall, they have formed a cooperative ecosystem. They are working together to keep this tank running. If you are not familiar with how an ecosphere works, uh, you could also call this a sealed, self-sustaining ecosystem. And this project works by the plants producing oxygen and taking up CO2 as the animals produce CO2 and take up oxygen. The animals will consume algae, detritus, and uh, bacteria, and wilted plant leaves and things like that. And they will produce waste, which acts as fertilizer for the plants to then grow and continue the cycle. Um, this forms a very nice model of life on Earth. And it's a great way to study, you know, exactly how an ecosystem can work. Um, this is a completely sealed jar. It is never opened. It does not receive any air from the outside world. Uh, there is no water changes or nothing like that. Uh, this project works as a self-contained unit. And um, you could even put this in a vacuum or bury it underground. As long as it had enough light, um, the system would continue. So I'm very happy about this. This is a three-year update for this polydarium. It might look a little rough, but, you know, that's nature. And it's it, to me, it's beautiful. I'm just so happy with it. So I'm going to cut to a few scenes from the setup. This is a very old video, <laughs> and uh, it is unlisted on YouTube. You might be able to find it in the comment section or the description section below. Uh, but this was simply a setup video. I feel like I was a kid when I built this. <laughs> It was only three years ago, but I didn't know anything about this hobby. I didn't know what I was doing. I just went with it. I had an idea, and I put it together, and, well, you've seen the results. They worked out quite well. And here's a clip from the one-year update showing the bladder snails still inside. Um, the algae that they're feeding on here, I have not seen in the three-year update today. Uh, but these bladder snails have done very well in here, and they're quite healthy. The marble chunks have promoted uh, healthy shell growth, which is very important for a snail. And I'm sure that's also helped the ostracods, which also have a shell of a different design. Uh, but these snails, they are feeding on bacteria, algae, and detritus found in the tank. And they're basically producing fertilizer for the plants. It turns out that snail waste is actually more fertile than worm castings, which is very important. And uh, these bladder snails are often hated in the aquarium industry uh, without any good reason. Bladder snails are beautiful and they're amazing. So thanks for watching, guys. This is the three-year update for the Polydarium Pickle Jar. I will include links to the other videos in the description, the various updates, and the unlisted setup video as well. Please like and subscribe. I produce weekly videos, and I'm always happy to share with you. This video was delayed as I am having some dental problems and the voiceover was a bit difficult for me to do.
But thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Ciao.